Luther Kruger Big Blue Sun Museum of Solar Cooking based out of Minneapolis and I'm here in beautiful Whidbey Island in the uh, Puget Sound area North Pacific Northwest uh, beautiful day maybe a little overcast but uh, we're going to talk about solar with Martin Nix who does a lot of things with a lot of solar uh, projects and uh, especially we're going to talk about solar forge is one thing but uh, the three questions I always have the first one is how did you get into solar in any way shape or form and specifically about solar cooking since the, the series is mostly about solar cooking but anything solar uh, that you've done since and then where you are now and we'll talk about projects that you've got going and then where do you see the future uh, for solar energy in general or how to promote it uh, how thing how we how can we get people to adopt solar cooking solar energy solar forges whatever it takes so We'll start with, how did you get involved with uh, solar in any way, shape, or form? <laughs> Long story. Hi, hey, thanks for coming out here. Sure. Uh, yeah. No, it, it started when I was like two years old. Wow. I was in uh, Virginia. Actually, I grew up in Albuquerque, and, uh, um, and uh, my relatives, uh, um, I mean, I'm, I'm direct descended of Kit Carson and, oh, you know, cool. from New Mexico, and, but uh, I was in um, um, uh, Virginia, Roanoke, and uh, Blacksburg, and I was like two years old and I looked up at the sun and I looked down a Coke bottle, I had a wire and I had a, had a little round thing, a little cog, you know, and I took the wire, stuck it in the Coke bottle and then I rounded around the, around the cog and uh, it didn't spin. My very first solar collector did not work. Oh, oh no. You know? <laughs> That's okay. I don't know, you I won't. think I was born to it, you know, sure. I think, I mean, um, all life comes from sunlight. You know, I mean, what, what do you, I mean, sunlight, water, earth, I mean, in between you have life. You don't have sunlight, you don't have food, you know. And um, uh, what people don't know about is that uh, solar energy can do more than just cook food. It can melt rocks, melt glass, evaporate tungsten, power rocket ships, uh, laser beams. I mean, solar energy is very powerful, you know, and that's what I'm into is industrial process I'm trying to teach mankind uh, the or you know bring to the mankind the energy of the Sun because the surface temperature of the Sun is like oh 10,000 degrees, 9,000 degrees and when you have a magnifying glass you know and things like that so what we're doing here this is the outside um, uh, this is uh, where we build and we test uh, these solar collectors and I'm, I, these are patented devices. I'm trying to push the art of solar cooking to where now we is more convenient, easier, better materials, you know, follow. I'm, I'm doing engineering and trying to get the stuff into mass production, sure. you know. And uh, what's breakthrough here on these uh, parabolic curves that I'm trying to build is building a parabolic with just hand tools is very difficult. Um, uh, there are other processes that is spun aluminum, uh, vacuum forming, uh, um, and um, I've heard it crazy ideas like melting ice and bending it with hydraulic and every one of these requires high-tech machinery how do you do it like the middle of Africa when the only thing you got is a hammer okay and uh, this is what we're doing right now the preferred material for solar energy is actually aluminum uh, soft easy to work uh, and we have enough beer cans to build enough parabolics upon planet earth to power the whole planet uh, but if we can come up with a low-cost parabolic that anybody in the whole world can build with cheaply, you know, with with all aluminum, uh, we could potentially power the whole planet with concentrated sunlight. Sure. I mean, uh, at ten thousand degrees, nine thousand degrees, you don't want to stand there. You know, it'll, it'll give you a sunburn. <laughs> uh, but I, I started doing solar cooking in part because I could not stand the ignorance that people had about solar energy, and uh, so what I did is I uh, everybody back in Seattle then thought that. Uh, um, uh, that solar energy didn't work, you know, as Arc Linkletter said, candlelight power, you know, that's what he thought it was. So what I did is I started building solar cookers of my design and patenting them, and I would set them out in the front yard and invite, uh, shall we say, street people by for dinner, and, uh, and I gradually over the years started improving on the earth, and so I now have 10 patents in solar energy, in solar cooking, and uh, some of them are and right now, what I'm trying to do is push the art now to cook it up a nice recipe of uh, melted glass, melted salt, put a little silver and gold in there, rare metals. Sure. 
Concentrated sunlight's a very powerful energy source. Uh, you build these things big enough. I mean, Native Americans used to build these things in carved uh, cliffs. And they would put like uh, gold leaf on the inside. And then they would focus it in a tiny spot. Now, mind you, this thing's like 200 feet in diameter, focusing the sun's rays onto a tiny spot. So they would like take, okay, get this guy's crisp skulls, fill it up with sand, and then they'll bury it in clay and they concentrate the sunlight on it, and out will come a crystal skull after it cooled down after an entire year. So it was concentrated sunlight, it's a pretty powerful source. Right here is, ladies and gentlemen, just built like one hour ago. The yeah. tension frame, the frame for the parabolic solar smelter. Right here is where, right there at the bottom, yeah, right there, there's gonna be a hole in the ground. And what happens is, the sunlight will always be there. Sunlight will always be here. It's stationary, like a campfire. Other concentrating solar collectors have it all waving up here and. Uh, you know, the, the, the focus is out here, and, but it's out on the ground. And as this, as this, this, this rotates, the track, and there's a planar reflector in front. And uh, eventually we're going to put sheet metal across here, reflective, and it's going to be like a giant magnifying glass and focus. So this is the frame. This is actually very revolutionary because uh, what I did here was take common materials, all of this is aluminum iron bars, and formed a parabolic, a parabolic shape. And this is actually quite, because it means that anybody in the whole world can build a parabolic now. You don't have to use high-tech machinery, you know. So uh, this is revolution now. What's going to happen is now this next step here, we haven't worked out the process yet on getting the sheet metal across here, but we're going to put like screws up, up in you know, tight bolts, and then we're going to very uh, vacuum, because what we're doing is taking the sheet metal and we're bending it into a shape. So what we're doing here is taking something that's flat and making it into a large object that's round. And it's a machine. It's a thermal machine. You know, you could put, you could melt glass bottles. You know, this this size here, I think, will do a, a, a solo cooked turkey. It will do a solo cooked turkey. Oh, this size will do. Uh, I don't know if it'll melt glass bottles, but the 12 footer should. This is, should turn out about 18, 8,000, 8,000 BTUs an hour. Uh, a little, the four footer, uh, 3,000 per hour, and then my 12 footer, which we're going to show here in a minute. Uh, should turn out 20,000 BTUs. Now I'll point out what 20,000 BTUs is. I have a one glass bottle that's one pound. I'll heat that up 20,000 degrees. I mean, now you know what happens when a glass bottle is heated up 20,000 degrees and it evaporates. A silicon going in the air. So, uh, you're, you're talking power systems here. And um, there's so many things to say about this, but. Uh, uh, I know one thing, in Canada, my solar cookers are in the textbooks, they're teaching the kids the, parab the form formula for the parabolic curve. And every school child in the entire world should know what the formula is for the parabolic for, uh, curve. Well, a paraboloid, so. actually. And, uh, um, but I, this, this, this got built like about an hour ago. And, well, uh, no, and when you say uh, parabolic curve, uh, I recall there's a program online is 20 years ago where you can plug in how deep you want a parabola, how wide, and and so it would make it uh, a deep parabola, so it's not like just a, uh, a circle, half a oh, circle, yeah. it's actually deeper, it's more of a oval, and uh, or if you want it shallower, it's more like a, a convex lens, you know, obviously the focal plane is outside the, the plane. Um, is, is there one formula that takes care of all all of those variations? Oh, that's or? the formula for the paraboloid. Right, okay. Uh, I think it's Z over A equals, uh, oh, you asked me to do it on yeah, memory. That's okay. <laughs> that's okay. I mean, all I know is I saved the program and it's uh, sitting on all of my laptops because um, I move everything over. Any calculus book in the whole world will have it. Sure, sure, <laughs> sure. Know? But uh, there one, is a formula for the paraboloid and you can calculate the exact position using that formula. Uh -huh. uh, I can tell you what that three-point location. Now, in the whole world, there's three-point locations, you know, uh, you know, you got this way, you got this way, you got that way, you know, and then you got this way, you got this way, and then you got this way, you know, but every, everything in the whole world has a three-point location on planet Earth, lat long, you know, and everything, sure. and so uh, that, that mathematical formula will tell you the exact location of where that parabola is, so I can tell you the exact location right here with that formula. Okay. No, and are you saying this will be permanently stuck in the ground and then whenever the sun catches it you'll have there are two ways of doing it okay. I could put bicycle wheels on it mm -hmm. 
The other way is this stays per, stuck permanently. And in front is a planar reflector or heliostat. And basically what it does, it reflects the light. See, in this particular case, the light is going to go straight in. Okay, now the sun is moving around. Right. So there's a, there's a marrow or, or heliostat reflector in front, and that's tilted around. And um, my calculations say that you need to move it once every 15 minutes. I find that the cheapest and most cheapest system in the whole world is bicycle wheels and manuals and, you know, uh, you know, safe enough and easy enough for any kid to use, you know. You don't need tractor tires. This is going to be really lightweight. I mean, you're talking about... Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, good, good. Uh, one concern is wind. Yeah. Wind will come yeah. in here, blow it away. So I have to... And also another concern is safety. Uh, this is not a toy. No, no. It is not a toy. Now, it's all safe everywhere except for one spot down there, you know. And um, um, when I show some of the laser beams and studies here upstairs, I have, I have a four-foot version. Um, what we are going to do here is a historic occasion. We are going to build a 12-foot solar smelter frame. Now, excuse me for being hoodie I want everybody to know in the audience to know that this has never been built before. And I do not know if it's going to work or not. But all the pieces are here. All the pieces are here. Yes. So I am going to sit here and bolt this thing together. And guess what? The nice thing about this is I didn't even use a mold. Yeah. So we're going to find out how well it works or whatever it is. But the nice thing about it, if it doesn't work, we want to look at it as engineers and go, oh, this is where we fix it. Sure. But the nice thing about this is that I'm taking a box pulling out of the box and building an energy system that could power a small African hut. You know, or melt your beer bottles. <laughs> okay, comes the moment. You know how many years I've been trying to develop this? I started off in uh, basically social science and I went to engineering. Mm -hmm. I studied at UNM, uh, New Mexico State, uh, uh, then the University of Washington system up here. Yeah. Um, you know, and then I had uh, 25 years at uh, in the airline industry. I, I, I have to be a very strong advocate of salt water distillation. Yeah. And this here could distill water too. Yeah. It'll do with a gallons an hour. Sure. Now this is a 12 foot diameter parabolic. Yeah, that diameter. This is the circular. Notice how long it is. See, and there's a mending plate right there in the middle. Middle. Sure. And uh, so I have eight, eight sections, and eight foot sections, three eight foot sections mended together. And this is actually a circle, and this is 24 feet long. Okay. Each one of these raw, each one of these stringers, parabolics, are uh, eight feet long. And what's neat about it is. Uh, when they make this stuff, standard size in the store or in the retail of the factory, is eight feet. So if I stick with standard size, it's actually easier to build this one than it would be the four footer. You know, it's nice using wing nuts because if it was a screwdriver or whatever, it'd be cumbersome. See how it's bent together and how it, it, it holds together. I have to tell you what. Let's tilt this thing down to the ground. This way. That way? Okay. See, it, should be, it shouldn't matter, right? I mean, it shouldn't, it should be the same either way, right? Unless it's a... Okay, no, no this, this is a parabolic curve. Well, I know, but... Okay. So it's, yeah. Now, you see, this all the way around is 24 feet. Okay. This right here is 8 feet, 8 feet. See, right. this right here is a parabolic and a parabolic. Right. So, hey, look, it holds up in this direction, you know? So what I need to do is I need to reinforce this. Yeah. So I need to put one, two, two more bars on okay. it. That's what the purpose, but this right here is structural. So, sure. So see, see, this is how we work. You know, you build it, you test it, see how it works, and then you prove on it. Well, now, as far as reflectors, that's going to lie on the outside or the inside? Okay, here's what's going to happen is we're going to drill holes once every inch. Right. And then we're going to put the sheet metal across here. Watch the microphone. Yeah. And then we put sheet metal across here. Okay. 
and then we're going to tune it right on in. Now, when we put, you don't want to eggshell how that eggshell works? You know, when you put the sheet metal on this thing, this thing should uh, shore right up, you know. So, I can tell right now that I need to structurally reinforce the, uh, the circular. The circular is too weak. And there it is. But, uh, hey, thanks a lot. 12 footer has been built. Uh, oh, you know what I need to do? Take a break. I, I need to take a photograph of it myself. Oh, go for it. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce to you. It happened to be a long time ago. I invented what was called a solar wedge cooker. Patented by the patent office, by the way. And um, its actual preferred material is, would you believe, road signs, you know, political recycled campaign signs. So every election we have a campaign to go out there and kind of like steal the campaign signs on the highways and we go off and make them into solar cookers, you know. Uh, uh, so basically I invented that and uh, uh, it's patented by the patent office and of course I have licensed all of my patent to you know, people, anybody out there who's doing solar cooking is entitled to use the technology, you know. I, uh, I invented it in part because, oh, let's just say there's some old fossils out there that don't like it, so I decided to do it and, you know, and cook them up, you know, you know how it goes. Um, one of my favorite recipes is uh, solar cooked turkeys. Yes, from pulverized. I start them off in the morning freezing. Frozen. Sure. And I pull it off at 3 p.m. pulverized. And I serve it at midnight. Still hot at 600 degrees. Wrap it up in a blanket. Put it in the toque. And then I'll haul it on a city transit bus to one of the local taverns. Uh, uh, the first solo cook restaurant in uh, all of Seattle was the uh, College Pub Inn in the University District of Seattle. And, uh, uh, and that was back in the days when we didn't know what we were doing, you know. But I would go down there and serve them up at midnight, and uh, people would go, huh, huh, huh. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it just totally, it totally, edu I, I've been contributing to ed educating maybe a thousand people. And I think what I did there probably educated more people about the power of sunlight than anything you can think of. Because you can cook a turkey by sunlight, that, that you can definitely, uh, you know, do some, uh, well, melt rocks, melt glass. So. Sure. so, ladies and gentlemen, check the latest improvement on the Solar Wedge Cook. Ladies and gentlemen, let me present to you a piece of cardboard. And flaps around, moves it around, friend that. This looks look like a small object, right? Watch what I do. I take a small object and I'm gonna make a big object. Okay. Notice how it falls open magically forming a big object. This. Now mind you this is made out of cardboard. This is a mock-up. Okay. I do this. In order to ah, there it goes. Don't worry. When we make these things out of sheet metal and stuff like that, this thing is going to be so beautiful. You I mean the reason why I like using metals because I'm I'm I you know I call these disposable. You know, I mean, they're great for like 10 years. I want to build stuff that's going to last a thousand years, you know, as long as the pyramids, you know. Shoot, I mean, there was so much solar energy used in building the pyramids, and we've lost that technology. And uh, uh, so here it is. So now I am now bolting the thing together. Mind you, this cardboard mock up. But it, in mass production, you go to the local store, buy one. People say expensive, but I'm going to point out to you that charcoal grills and propane grills, people have spent a hundred, nine hundred thousand bucks on them. And really, anytime you do, anytime people do charcoal, they should always have a solar cooker there because really, uh, solar cooking is a different form of art, you know. And so now I have these are the triangular plates, and these these focus the sun's rays right here. Now. Notice what I'm about ready to do. 
underneath are the, what is called the planar reflectors, or the solar wings. And these are going to, well, what you do is you point it at the sun, and you reflect the light right in. Watch. These are pegs. I like having a handle on one end because I don't want to poke people in the eye. I prefer wood, I prefer metal, because metal can really stab people. So you, you want to be concerned about safety. Uh, see what I did here now. Here's the planar reflector. And uh, here's the other one. Now, I am now, there's a back stop here to keep it from going over. I have a kind of a false floor in there because it helps on the, mm -hmm. shall we say, the mechanics the best thing. I think I built this thing for maybe five bucks. I think the most expensive part is the chair. That's some spare aluminum around the house. So I... It'll turn out 300 degrees. Or water. My favorite application is stealing salt water to fresh water. Huge market there. I know a lot of people with mules and cattle out there that like to have those. Well, come on, let's see. Let's cut it out. There we go. You see how the see yep. and and if I want to raise the lower one, I can do that too. Okay. See how it works. Oh yeah. Now, people notice something that's missing. The cook cookware. Watch what I do. Da da da. Frying pan. Da da da. Pot holder. Traps the heat. Put it right there. Ah, Two hundred <laughs> degrees. Put a glass lid over the top. Put it in there. Okay. Make sure it's the oven. See what I did. Now comes the plastic bag. This is a high temperature bag, turkey bag actually. Hmm. Now when I do my turkeys, uh, it's just two bags. I don't even use glass. Hmm. I don't use turkey. Um, but see it is. Now you see this is actually about oh eight suns. One sun comes off this, sun comes off here, sun comes here, comes here, sun comes directly, and sun bounces here. So what you have here is a whole bunch of suns focusing here. So what happens the light bounces here, bounces off here, and that's a two bounce system. And so, here you are. Take this backpacking. <laughs> sure, sure. And make, you know, you can put a plastic bottle right here, hose, put another plastic bottle back there, put salt water in there, or impure water, mm -hmm. and it will distill that water so the next morning. I think we got a lot to learn from ancient people. There's a lot of technology out there that we've lost. And solar cooking is one of them that we're rediscovering. And Native Americans have been so doing solar cooking for years. They even cook food with wind. Uh, so, um, having people make their own energy, that's significant. You know, what's wrong with people making their own fuel, making their own heat, making their own electricity, making their own uh, food, making their own fresh water, or, or even their own medicine supplies, or, you know, uh, having a solar greenhouse? I mean, what's wrong with that? Sure. Now, uh, back to the cooker briefly, um, this has a patent? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The industrial applications and this stuff here. You can, you can use this to, for, uh, um, say, heating up rocks mm -hmm. and then use it to iron clothing. And so there are other applications of solar cookers than just cooking food. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm doing, yeah. you yeah. know, trying to expand that art in that direction. Sure. Um, you know, glancing over your shoulder, the, for some reason, that thing looks really nice now. <laughs> I don't know if it's settled. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the molecules are adjusting. Yeah, that's right. Well, it's, yeah. The molecules are adjusting to the uh, change. Yeah. yeah. And uh, But what I learned from this is that the circular is not strong enough. I'm going to have to double its strength. And so, uh, 
And one of my big complaints is lack of capital investment for solar energy inventions, such as some as I have. And um, the investors in this country have got to change their attitudes. Fortunately, we've got these big investors. The only thing they want to invest in is things that have 20, 30 percent return on investments. And um, I, 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 I have a lot of problems with that. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, and I'm really happy that we're starting as an industry. We're starting to focus in more on manufacturing issues because I don't think the problem really is educating people on how to use the technology. The problem is factories not not having the capital to put stuff in mass production. You know? mm -hmm. uh, we we work the way around that by going to people making it themselves. I've been trying to show people that if we help people produce their own energy, I honestly believe we're going to have a less violent planet. Because a lot of times people fight over food and property and things like that. And when people make their own energy and not forced to be dependent, it means now they don't have to fight to make the choice between gasoline and groceries kind of thing, you know. So uh, I see converting this plant rapidly to solar energy. Ladies and gentlemen, behind me is my latest project. The solar smelter. This is a four foot inversion. Now, to explain it, excuse me if I flip around here, the secret formula for the parabolic curve is the following x squared is 4py. p is your constant. In other words, you want it bigger, make p bigger. There's other formulas out there for the paraboloid. But, you know, every kid in Canada sees my solar cookers and textbooks, and kids in Canada are learning the parabolic curve. The thing about the parabolic curve is that it's so powerful. It actually allows you to concentrate energy. It's kind of like a magnifying glass. So let me illustrate how a parabolic curve actually works. So let me move some things around. This is a parabolic curve. A magnifying glass and it actually bends light it's a form of parabolic curve vanity mirror that's parabolic curve there's another way of concentrating light Brunel lenses it's kind of like a play glass these things will melt glass they don't melt pennies people may be so you see you walk up See how it bends the light. Bends the light. And Brunel lens is another way of concentrating light. What I have come up with is a new formula where I take a parabolic curve. A parabolic. This right here is a parabolic. We did this in a three frame. And then what I do is I take a planar reflector. I put it in front. And then reflect light into it. And it comes to a very tiny little spot. That is where the smelter is at. That's where we melt rocks. You build this thing big, you'll be able to melt rocks, melt glass, be able to mine gold ore, silver. See, I, I'm a solar chef. And what I'm doing right now is a recipe of melted glass, melted salt. Throw a little silver in it. I bet it'd be pretty yummy. You know, rare metals out there. One of those run for like four hundred thousand dollars a pound, and you use solar smelters to mine. So, solar cookers can cook up recipes of metals, and you can even put a glass bottle in there, in theory. But the thing is, uh, most solar smelters on planet Earth are big furnaces and everything. What we need to do is make it so that the common man can use it, buy it on online, or buy it local Kmart, take it home, put it in your backyard. And you got this total energy system to make steam for you, melt glass. What it does is put the focus of the sun into a hole in the ground. Other solar collectors have it all waving up in the air, but you put it stationary hole in the ground, that's pretty nice because, first of all, it's safer. Uh -huh. There's only one way in and out. But also, too, you don't have all the plumbing and everything. And so you can use a solar smelter to, uh, you know, for a crucible. Or make steam, make hot water, you know, 
or hot air, as in cage. But this is patented by the patent office. I am a patented inventor. This is what a patent looks like. Okay. And on the inside, this particular patent actually patents. Okay. This is a solar smelter that was designed by Native Americans. And they used to carve parabolic eclipses. In ancient times, they used to melt rocks for pyramids. That's how they got the really super smooth uh, granite surface in the pyramids. They melted the granite. They didn't, you know, when they did hard light, they didn't get their chip and carved all the things in there. They went in there and they melted with sunlight. I have made this patent available to all American Indian tribes because this is their invention. Fast forward today. Did you know there's enough aluminum on planet Earth, enough beer cans out there, to build enough parabolics to power the whole planet? Yeah. We can power the whole planet by parabolics. And uh, uh, you throw in wind energy, and ocean wave energy, and other energy, you have a complete energy system, bioenergy. Um, Sun's bigger than any oil field any old day. Uh, in fact, you can build rocket engines that are uh, solar powered. So here is my latest. This is the four foot version, all aluminum solar smelter. And it's under work right now, guys. So, I mean, he caught, the cameraman caught me just as we were building this. So this is a research project. So we still haven't worked out the entire manufacturing process. Anymore. But what's significant about it is we can make a parabolic with just hand tools. That means people can make it in Africa without having to use high-tech machinery, 3D machinery, you know, and, you know, uh, stamped uh, spinal aluminum processes, all these things that require expensive machinery. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to fix it up so aluminum, you can take aluminum, bend it in shape, and build a parabolic. And that way you will have every African home and hut solar-powered with the energy intensity. We're talking about the surface temperature of the sun, 9,000 degrees. That's pretty hot. That evaporate rock. So, that being said, let me show you what a parabolic curve is. This here is a parabolic curve. This is a headlamp. But notice what I do. I cut it in half. Okay. This, this is how the pattern works. So it's only halfway. And then I put a planar reflector in front. But the thing is, notice the shape here. At the 45 degree tangent, that is where the focus of the sun is at. And something that's really interesting too, is at the 45 degree, if, you know, if this is like four feet wide, P is like two feet wide. So it, it, it worked, there's, a, there's actually a ma mathematical formula. And uh, the thing is too, it has an overhang. So light comes in this way and it bounces. So the light focuses in all directions. So uh, this, so I have a, a, a curved overhang, and then I have the uh, parabolic back here. And so if you, so by moving stuff around, moving it into the optimum conditions, uh, you can cost effectively uh, build the parabolic. From the 45 degree engine back to the back to the back side here, uh, that uses more material, you know, less material to collect sunlight. But then when you go above the 40 line, you use more material to collect sunlight. So you see the relationship that goes on between um, the design. So what we're doing here is trying to build ribs because there's a structural component here. This here. This is what you call the parabolic. Silver mylar acrylic. You know, that's not what we're going to use. We're going to use sheet metal. <coughs> oh, excuse me. But here is the frame. Look how strong it is. It's a tension frame. Push here. You take flat iron, drill holes, bend it, and then we're going to put sheet metal between here. Now in order to build a sheet now, I'm going to build a template. 
mind you, I still haven't gotten the sheet metal for this. I'm going to use reflective sheet metal. Aluminum oxide radar reflection film. And I'm going to put them in the template. Please help me. And then we're going to cut the sheet metal to the appropriate shape. I'm using aluminum foil here. Just for illustration for me. See what I'm doing. So what happens is, ah, that way we can engineer, take a piece of flat sheet metal, cut it to shape. Notice how flat it is, and then we bend it into its proper shape, and. That's a little blacksmith work. But the nice thing about it is anybody in the whole world can do it without expensive machinery. That's the beautiful thing about it. Uh, the thing bolts together easily. Ring nuts I found being very useful. And you can disassemble it and put it in the BW. You know? You can build these things four feet in diameter, eight feet in diameter, twelve feet in diameter. 12 feet one should melt glass bottles. Four footer. I think it'd probably do a gauntlet. I know. Uh, we built a mock-up on it and caught wood on fire. So, uh, but anyway, the blacksmiths have been doing a pretty good and darn job here. The neat thing about this, it's a light show. I am now going to use some laser beams to illustrate how the parabolic curve works. So, we've got drawings. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a laser beam. Please observe the following. When I take a laser beam, when I take a laser beam, notice how the laser beam is there. Doesn't matter where I go, on the side, whatever, it always tends to be in the center. Somehow, I can tell where P's at. That's the focus where the smelter is going to be at. Now, watch what I'm about ready to do. I'm going to put multiple laser beams in there all over the place. See how the light tends to be focused there in the center? And that's the folk where, where you see those little red little dots down there. It takes Oh, let's put it this way. If this thing was like 200 feet in diameter, you'd probably be seeing maybe 100, 200 suns down there in the hole. They, I mean, ancient people used to build these things. They carved these things in, in uh, uh, sandstone cliffs that are like 200 feet in diameter. Uh, solar smelting is an art. And what I'm doing here is providing the tools to all mankind so that all mankind can produce their own energy. If you want to see good examples of what I'm talking about, Sandia Labs has a solar concentrating lab facility. They have a, a big giant solar smelter there, solar furnace actually. That's what they call it, this smelter actually. This is our project. And uh, all I have to say is thank you very much for taking an interest in our project.